You guys, I am so super excited for our, the tile that we're doing today. And so we're using this paper right here, and this is called Black Patchwork by Decoupage Queen. And I actually rotated it this way to pick my section of paper. Um, so these little pieces here are from, this is from Primitive, right? Yeah. A little bit bigger one. This is from Primitive. These are from Acanthus, as are these little critters right here. I've prepped the board the same way as normal with embossing medium. So this is the section that I'm using, you guys, and I cut it smack dab from the middle. So here is my clear liquid patina. Because I'm going to be um, painting the pieces right on here, I have to make sure that this is sealed well, so I'm going to be able to pull back. So I'm going to go ahead and use my big top right now. So I'm using the Type On Quick and Thick, and I'm just going to kind of lay them out. So these small little pieces are from primitive. The ones that are the more um, loose flowers, those are from primitive. And then the ones that are more defined are from acanthus. So I'm just going to start roughly in the middle-ish. Set that up there just a little bit. And then this piece goes on top along with one of these elements here that are from a campus. Now, because these are somewhat dry, it could break on me and I'm like, totally okay with that. So I'm just looking for placement right now. So this one goes down here, but then I've got this one that supports the top of it like that and then a little one supports the bottom of it so once i figure out where those go i'm going to pull that off and now i can put these in place and then that can go right there so that's going to get supported by the other molds uh, let me think and then this little guy goes about right there. So let's see, it goes into this part. It's quite the puzzle, but I spent a lot of time laying it out. Before we came on. I should be able to put this piece on there realizing that it's only going to stick wherever it makes contact with the other molds. Okay, so here's this one.
and I'm gonna grab another little one. The only other thing I could do is peel this off like I just did. Put this in here. And then put that. Let's see. Wait, I lie. Hold on. Put that in there. And put this up top. You see what I think of that. Like that. Thanks. So the sandy blonde, I'm going to get a little bit more contrast for my crinoline. Um, that's all the sandy blonde I'm going to use. I'm going to go in with my crinoline, I'm just going to wipe my brush off, and I'm just focusing on the tops. So we got, we have a little bit of depth there already, just from layering those two colors. So we're going to dry that. I'm going to go in with what I call a scrubby brush. It's just a stiff bristle brush. And I can just use my paper towel. So it's going to help me just get that off more easily. Basically just sealing the whole thing again. And the reason I did this because I want the drips to go over this. I want it to look like this was a piece that was done and then it got wet, you know, from being in grandma's attic. And rusted. You could certainly make an argument for bringing this black paint up into the piece a little bit more. Okay, we're going to dry that. So I like the layered chocolate and the summer crush, and then I like them together as well in various um, values. So there's some of that, and then I'm gonna mix it. So the first thing I'm gonna do, that same brush, I got the layered chocolate. I'm gonna just hit part of this. And then I'm gonna go into the Summer Crush. Maybe I'll get more in there. And now I'm going to douse it. And it's really smart to have a paper towel for something down there.
and I could hit it with the heat gun, but I'm gonna layer this, so I'm just gonna kinda keep going. So just give you an idea of where I'm at. I'm gonna go for the drips right now. So I'm gonna stick my palette in more of just the summer crush. And I'm gonna focus on from those tendril looking things, All right? So can you see what that's doing there? Let me go in, maybe with some more brown. While it's still wet. And I'm kind of just messing with it a little bit. Getting some of that off. So I just heat set that. I'm gonna do the same thing on the next one. And sometimes if you flip this over, it's actually easier. And there are times I need to help it along. Can I see this okay, Pam? Mm -hmm. There we go. I'll do the next one. Okay, now I'm gonna go in just off the base of some of those flowers. Easier with a brush. What brush was I just using? So I'm gonna go in with a brush. Crush. Mix up a little bit more. My rust color. There we go. Now just dab that in. Get those low spots. Okay, and now douse that. So does that make sense? Can you guys see that? I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm sorry. Now I'm getting some puddling around that edge. 
which is saving me from having to go in and do it deliberately. I take a little bit of crinoline and I'm going to see about if I want to dry brush the tops of these. Oh yeah. So I'm literally just hitting the edges of this stuff. with a little bit of crinoline to make them pop more. We just got them just to pop off of there a little bit. Okay. The last thing I'd wanna do is look at my edges and see if it's something that needs to be addressed. No. Okay, because that drip is like amazing. That could probably be either wiped or improved upon. And that drip's pretty good. But here, you know, I might want to improve on that dripping just a little bit. So I'm going to wet it. And I'm going to take this and see if I can't get it to flow. I don't need a lot, just like the suggestion of the rest. I don't know if you could notice how well that repels off the big top. So that looks, that looks good. The side probably needs to be done. The last thing is take your baby wipe. And just go over the tops of these. Just wiping off some of that crinoline I dry brush because I don't want it to be so stark. That is it, you guys. It still needs to be sealed. Is this dry enough for me to hold up? All right, I'm going to let you look at this. 